East Atlanta. It's so wonderful to see you here this morning. I greet you, hallelujah, in the name of the living God. Oh, what a blessed morning it is to celebrate Palm Sunday. We want to thank you again for coming, for being here. In Pastor Ward's absence, I'm Evangelist Brigham. We'll be bringing the word to you this morning. And we say hello to our pastor and our first family. How you doing? Enjoy yourselves. And JL, great, great, great. We bless you and we wish you well and we're praying for you. You know, it's nothing like a father that will look after and take care of his family. God gave us charge to do many things and the thing is to take care of the family. God watches over us and he's given us the responsibility to watch over our families through him who is the head. This morning I'm going to come to you from John chapter 12 verses 12 through 18 and the word reads, On the next day much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. These things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, that they had done these things unto him. The people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record. For this cause, the people also met him, for they heard that he had done this miracle. Praise God. Praise God for the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to come to you this morning speaking on the significance of Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry of Jesus. This week that leads to the celebration of the passion of Jesus Christ, who died in 33 AD. Many Christians are aware that Palm Sunday begins the Holy Week, but not many are aware of the traditions and the meanings and the history behind it. Palm Sunday is a reference to the triumphant entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem to celebrate the feast day of Passover. The story is relayed as we just read in John 12 verses 12 through 18. We're told that as Jesus came toward Jerusalem, the people ran out and spread palm branches along the road for him and proclaimed Hosanna and that he is the king of Israel, God's ambassador. We are then told that Jesus rode a donkey into the city of Jerusalem, which fulfilled the prophecy that the king would enter the city riding a donkey. The Bible portrays this entrance as the recognition of Jesus as king of all mankind and savior to his people. The word Hosanna in Hebrew means to save or a savior, to rescue or to help, and is a reference by the people to the belief that Jesus was coming to save his people as well as all mankind. Now I said to you that we were going to talk about the significance of Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry, and we shall. But in the process of this, 
I wanted to make you aware that there are certain symbols as we read this word. The placement of the palms on the road, he followed into Jerusalem, and the fact that he rode in on a donkey all have symbolic meaning that are lost on many readers in the Bible today. You see, we just get caught up into reading the words, but we're not really looking and understanding what that really means. So let's talk about the donkey. As we know, that's a passive animal. But in the days of Jesus, there was a long-standing tradition of how conquering kings and generals would enter cities. If a king or a general rode into the city on a horse, then he was telling the, city, the citizens of that city that he was coming to rule. Often, it was an iron fist. On the other hand, if he ended riding a donkey, it was symbolic to the people that he was coming in peace. This allowed persons living in the city to know that the leader was not going to be a tyrant in any way toward them. But he was coming to restore the city and provide peace and a chance of prosperity for all the people who lived there. One of the primary reasons Jesus was rejected as Messiah by the Jewish people was that he did not come as conqueror, but instead came as a bringer of peace. They were expecting him to be the one to remove the Gentile invaders from Judea. And when he did not lead them in this way, he was quickly rejected. Jesus came as the king of peace, and his riding on a donkey into the city was a testament of his true intentions. In addition, this also fulfilled the prophecy about him in Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 and 10, which is the specific prophecy that was referred to in John 12. This talked about the Messiah, who was the king and the righteous one, coming into Jerusalem as victor, that he would be riding a donkey's coat, so the people should not be alarmed because he was bringing peace to all nations. The prophecy would be that the Messiah was to enter Jerusalem as a victor, but a peaceful one. Now let's move along to the branches. The palm branches. Palm branches are great, symbolic, reference and significance in the time of Jesus. These branches were symbols of triumph, eternal life, and peace. When Jesus entered the city and the people laid palms at his feet, it was symbolic to their recognition of him as king and the bringer of peace. While most understood the significance of declaring him king, few probably understood that the palm branches were to be a prophetic of his raising from the grave as well. The two aspects of this account were to speak to the Jews throughout the Roman Empire that Jesus was the true Messiah, that he had come to fulfill his role as king of all. And while the people may not have truly recognized this or even believed it, their actions supported it completely. Now, let's move on to the quotes as it is written in the Word. In Luke 19, 36 and 37, it adds one detail that is not recognized in the account of John's. It adds the detail that people put their quotes on the road as Jesus approached. Now, back in the day, people, men particularly, 
would throw their coats down. If there was a puddle of water, they would throw their coats down so their wives or their girlfriends would walk over it so they would not get their feet wet. Well, that was during the day of chivalry, and that is totally lost on our society today. But in Jesus' time, the idea was quite different. Laying out of garments was akin to laying out the red carpet. This was the ultimate red carpet runway experience. You see, back in that time, garments were kind of hard to come by because of the fabrics, and of course, they couldn't mass produce it. So whenever they did this, it was a true honor. It showed a sign of respect and the acknowledgement of that person's position. When the people laid their garments before Jesus, they were, in essence, rolling out the red carpet for him. Now you say, well, she's talking about everything but what she said. And that is the significance of Sunday, of Palm Sunday, and the triumphal entry of Jesus. You know, as we read this story, and I'm sure some of you all are getting ahead of me, because this is the beginning of the Holy Week, and we know how everything ended. So, you see, when we talk about some Palm Sunday, or the triumphant entry, we look at, when we say triumph, celebration, and all the things that go with it. Now, when you look in the word, and incidentally, the significance in Palm Sunday can be found in all of the Gospels. In Matthew, you can look in chapter 21, 1 through 11, in Mark 11, 1 through 10, in Luke 19, 28 through 38. And of course, John chapter 12, verses 12 through 30, 18. There is actually nothing triumphal about the entry because Jesus, after all, was just riding on a donkey, not even a horse. He did not have an army with a bunch of ordinary, he just had a bunch of ordinary people around him who would later on desert him five days later. The people shouted Hosanna, as in Matthew 21, verse 9. And they would cry out, crucify him, five days later, as it can be read in Matthew 27, in verse 22. The man who was decorated the king of Israel would be brutally crucified in five days. So why is it called a triumphal entry? What is the significance of Palm Sunday? Some preachers would say, I'm glad you asked. I say to you, let's analyze it. Let's see from God's point of view and the people's point of view. The triumphal entry of Palm Sunday are a part of God's master plan. His master plan. Nearly 600 years ago, before the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, God foretold this event through his prophet, Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughters of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding a donkey. And this you will find in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. You see, the Jews have been waiting for a savior for centuries. They all knew that the Messiah would come. However, their concept of the Messiah was a mighty warrior who would deliver them from the Roman tyranny. Although Jesus did not fit this profile, they have heard of his miracles, especially the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead, which he had performed prior to the beginning of the week of Palm Sunday. 
So, you know, with that in mind, they were probably thinking, we're hoping that Jesus would perform some kind of miracle to get rid of all of the Romans. Probably that was the reason why they gave him a reception before the king. The Psalms represented victory. And they all shouted Hosanna, which has a meaning including hallelujah, and which means safe. And they were right. But their view of the kingdom was entirely different from the view of Jesus. Jesus always spoke about his kingdom or the kingdom of God, but his kingdom is not of this world. When they realized that, they got bent. They were totally messed up. They wanted God to come and they wanted Jesus to come down and say, boom, that's it. I'm the miracle worker. I can do this. I can put y'all in your place. But you see, God is not a God of war in the sense that we see it and that we mean it. You see, when we have problems, we say to Jesus, Lord, get them. Make him do this and make him do that. My husband, Lord, I'm just tired of him. Make him this and make him that. Lord, my enemies are coming against me. Jesus, get them. But you see, God is not an author of confusion. He is not a God of war, but he is a God of peace. He is a God of love and peace. And that is what we must recognize. And again, you said, okay, then, what is the significance of Palm Sunday? And what is this triumphal entry that you're talking about? So now we've gone back to the original question. What is the significance of Palm Sunday? And the answer would come seven days later. Or the following Sunday. The entry was the beginning of the greatest triumph ever made known in history, the defeat of death, the victory over death. No one, no other Jesus has ever been able to defeat death. And what other Jesus do you know? Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Death couldn't contain him. That is why it is a triumphant entry. That is the significance of Palm Sunday. You see, it's not just a matter of, okay, this is the beginning of the Holy Weekend. They celebrated him by throwing palms and, and their coats and things of this nature. But it was the beginning of the freedom that we all experience in this life today. It was the beginning thank you, Jesus, of new life, new breath. It was the beginning of life everlasting. It was the beginning of, hallelujah, our Savior dying on the cross for us. Hallelujah, it was the beginning of, hallelujah, the glorious of the Lord, thy Savior. You see, we have to realize it's just not an act, but it is symbolic to the very beginning of what will be forever. There is no more sting of death. We do not have to walk in burdens, being burdened by anything because the Savior came in that day on the meekness of an ass or a colt or a donkey. Hallelujah. And he came in just meek and mild. Hallelujah, and I can just imagine the people looking at him and seeing his face. And there had to be a regalness there, for the people were celebrating and cheering him. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And I'm sure there were some that said, oh, these Romans are going to get it now. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And you know it's only a few in a crowd that can cause disruption. And when they realized that God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, was not riding in on a horse, symbolizing that he was going to come in and run them up. That he was going to have the people scattered everywhere in fear. That he was going to be a tyrant. 
but he came in on a donkey, representing the peace that he is. And I'm sure there were some in the crowd that said, man, look at it, look at it. Here it is, we've been waiting forever for a savior to come, and he coming in here on a donkey. Man, what matter of man is this? Then I can imagine they were talking one to the other saying, we got to do something by him. And then they start talking and all of a sudden there was an uproar in the week that followed. Then they wanted to scream, crucify him. Hallelujah. And then they put him on a cross and beauty, they just totally and brutally destroyed or what they thought was destruction. The man that we have known and that we know as our Savior. It was the beginning of God's master plan. It was the beginning that was set us free forever. It was the beginning of everlasting life. It was the beginning of a peace that we can surrender to. It was a beginning to eternal life. Understand the symbolisms. Understand the significance. And look at Palm Sunday, not just the beginning of Holy of the Holy Week, but the beginning of life anew. We can rejoice for that day. That day he rode in on a donkey. That day he came in as the savior of the world. That day he came in as the peaceable God that we know and love today, our Jesus, our Savior. Oh, blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this Palm Sunday. We thank you, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the name of the Most High God. Hallelujah, in Christ Jesus, we come and we pray and we celebrate this day, this day, the beginning of the Holy Week. We say thank you, Jesus, for coming in on that coat, for coming in riding in your glorious peace and your glorious love to begin the master plan. May God bless you and may God keep you. I hope this has empowered you in your mind to see and understand what the symbolisms are and when we read the word, that we can see it and read it with renewed love and renewed interest, renewed knowledge and renewed wisdom. Bless you, East Atlanta. And as Pastor Ward would say, love you and be blessed.